Okay. Ding ding. The meeting is being recorded. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome everyone, world leaders from different parts of the district cities to be here. So let us give yourself a huge round of applause and make some noise if it's convenient because today is so special. We are going to learn a lot from our master class, a theme speaker happened to be our club member as well. As a matter of fact, a little bit of a background of advanced hashtag Arden speakers. We are a very diversified club with members all over the world. And that's why we have decided to host a master class every month. And at the same time, I also want to acknowledge some of our previous esteemed speakers for our master class, including distinguished Toastmaster David Fisher, past international director, and also Kevin Boyd, past international director, distinguished Toastmaster from Hawaii. And of course, there'll be many, many of us who may also serve as a theme speaker in the future. So with this, it's my honor to introduce our Toastmaster of the day. She is certainly a remote leader as well. She has been groomed by our esteemed speaker, Alicia Curtis, over the past many months. And she has certainly bloomed to be an amazing leader. She's right now tuning in from Sri Lanka. And I'm so honored to introduce our Toastmaster of the day, Sanduni, over to you. Thank you very much, Patricia. And uh, it's really an honor to be introduced to our keynote speaker today. So, ladies and gentlemen, Please join me in welcoming our exceptional individual whose dedication to personal and professional development, as well as her unwavering commitment to the Toastmasters community has left a remarkable imprint across the multiple continents. She is not just a Toastmaster, she is a paragon of excellence in leadership and communication. With an impressive achievement of four distinguished Toastmaster awards, she has demonstrated unparalleled dedication to the Toastmasters program. She has completed all 11 educational parts in Pathways two times and is on the verge of doing it again. An extraordinary feat that speaks volumes about her passion for growth and learning. She is an active member of several clubs worldwide, including that's debatable in District 12, Travel, Toastmas Travel Talk Toastmasters in District 49, and ha Advanced Hashtag Ardent Speakers in District 51. Her involvement in these diverse clubs under underscores her commitment to fostering communication and leadership skills in a variety of cultural contexts. The Toastmasters journey is marked by numerous leadership roles. Most recently, she has been elected as the district director for District 49 for the upcoming team. Her past roles, including division A director and program quality director, district PR manager, and district admin manager, reflecting her ability to lead and inspire at both local and international levels. She has also been recognized with prestigious awards such as District Director Award of the Year and Quarter Two Leader of the PAC Award in District 100, Division Director of the Year, Area Director of the Year, and so on. Beyond her roles and awards, her contribution as a club sponsor, mentor, and coach have been invaluable. She has sponsored and mentored several clubs, including American Flow and Home Toastmasters and Spanish English bilingual Toastmasters, fostering new opportunities for members to grow and excel. In addition to her Toastmasters achievement, she is a full time student at Charles Dunt State University, where she is pursuing a Bachelor of Adult and Vocational Education. This further showcases her dedication to lifelong learning and her passion in for education. 
Her journey is a testament to what one can achieve with dedication, perseverance, and commitment to excellence. Her contributions have not only enriched the lives of countless Toastmasters, but have also set the benchmark for what is possible within this organization. Please give me a warm welcome to our distinguished keynote speaker, District Director, District 49, Hawaii, USA, Distinguished Toastmaster, Alicia Curtis. Over to you, dear madam. Thank you so much, Sanjuni. Let's give her a huge round of applause. I love that introduction, and I think I know where that introduction comes from. I love it anyway. It was an amazing introduction, and I really want to say a huge welcome to all of you from all across the globe. We've got people calling in from Dubai, Zimbabwe, Peru, the USA, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, India, Malaysia. I believe we've also got some people calling in from China, Vietnam, Hawaii, Australia, and New Zealand, and I believe there are many other countries as well. So thank you all for coming here today. And it is a pleasure to serve you as your speaker today. Does everyone remember back in 2020 what they were doing? Hands up if you remember what you were doing back in 2020. I think we all might remember what we we're doing back in 2020. Let me get you back to 2020. It was January of 2020. And I was sitting here in Sydney, living a very boring life, living a very unexpected life. I was about to go to the Elton John concert here in Sydney. Now, if you are an Elton John fan, please raise your hands on the screen. <clears throat> oh, yeah, there's some Elton John fan. Now, I really did not like Elton John, to be perfectly honest, but my friend dragged me to the Elton John concert and I thought, brilliant, that's what I'm going to be spending my whole year doing. Every single weekend, I'm going to go to, the, uh, to an Elton John style concert or something that is exciting. Lo and behold, less than three months later, we would all be going into lockdown. Our lives would change. My whole life would change in 2020. I would go from being wanting to be at the concert, being able to go out every single night, to being locked up. Does everyone remember that day that they had to go into lockdown? Hmm. That was the biggest change for all of us and I think it was one of the greatest changes that happened to me you see I didn't like lockdown when it first happened back in 2020 I was bored was everyone else bored in lockdown on that first day I can see the introverts shaking their head going nah it's perfect this is heaven this is exactly what we dream of but for the extroverts like Pat and I Pat did you hate lockdown at the beginning Absolutely. I was like, devastated. <laughs> oh my God. I can't see people now. Okay. So as you can see, fellow extrovert there um, was absolutely not appreciating it. I remember calling my friend, um, Sarah, I think her name was, and I said, Sarah, I am bored. And that kept on going on every hour of the day until 12 hours later, I had picked up the phone and go, Sarah, I am really seriously bored. And she said, if you pick up the phone one more time, I am going to seriously hang up on you or, or shut you down. So I had to learn to survive being by myself at home. And what was I going to do? I still had Toastmasters. I still had Toastmasters. So what did I do? Well, I speak Korean as a second language. So I thought, I'm not going to stick around in Australia if there's nothing else to do, I'm going to go overseas and I'm going to hop on the Zoom Airlines and I'm going to go overseas and hop on the Zoom Airlines. So two weeks after we were in lockdown, I was seriously involved in literally clubs in Korea. The first week I got knowing the clubs in Korea and then I was on board. <clears throat> and then that sort of led to one step after another, after another. And that is what started me going all around the world. I remember the first weekend that we were stuck in lockdown and I went to Patty Kennedy's um, home club in Canada and that was Ask Advanced Speakers Club in Canada. And I didn't know a single person there, but it was the best experience ever. And then I started to meet people and then I networked and then I met more people. 
And that's how I got known throughout Toastmasters because I met people who met people, then met me people, and then I met people, and then I kept on meeting people. And what does this have to do with remote leadership? Well, it's about networking and connection and community. And it's about being able to have that conversation and being able to put myself out there. At the beginning, it was not easy to be able to connect with people in a remote setting because this is all you have. The square screen is all you have. And it is not easy to be able to look into a camera and to be able to communicate, especially when you don't have the equipment. Let's be honest, how many of us four years ago just had a laptop a light up on the roof, and that's all we had. Come on, hands up. Well, I can say about five to ten thousand dollars later, and we've screens and about five or six different cameras, about eight different keyboards, different headsets, you name it. I've got it. I have really discovered how remote leadership can be worked. I've also discovered how we can use Zoom to enhance our ability to communicate across the world. I couldn't even sit like this and talk into a camera directly, you know, four years ago. But now it has been part of my life. I do this four to five times a day, seven days a week. And I communicate. As we see here, we've got almost 40 people in the room. And you're just a minimal part of who my existence is today. So from those humble beginnings four years ago, it has been a wonderful journey. As I said, it started in Canada, then it went to Korea, then it went to Malaysia, then it went to India, then it went to Japan, then it went to the USA. And it was in about April of 2020 that I landed on the virtual shores of Hawaii. I didn't meet Kevin first and I didn't meet Jan. In fact, Jan wasn't even in Toastmasters at that time. She didn't join until about September or October of that year. The first people I met was a lovely club called Prince Kahio Toastmasters and it was on Friday, Good Friday here in Australia. And I remember walking through the virtual doors and they're like, aloha. And I'm like, g'day, typical Australian accent that I have. And they looked at me and they're like, oh, lovely to meet you. Where are you from? I said, Sydney. And that was the start of a journey in Hawaii. And that was where I found my aloha, my ahana, and my beautiful family there in District 49. <clears throat> so a lot of people are asking questions about how did you break into remote leadership? So that's how I found District 49. It was actually District 100 where I started as a remote leader. I had just come off the year or was coming off the year as an admin manager in District 70 where I was serving um, for, the, for the final time as an admin manager. And then I was invited by District 100. Would I like to be their public relations manager? Now, this had never been done before in the world as a remote leader. And I thought, hell, why not? Why not put my hand up? Not realizing exactly what I was signing myself up for. Because... Hours between California, Pacific Daylight and Pacific Standard Time are a lot different to Australian Eastern Standard or Eastern Daylight Time. We're talking 19 to 17 hours behind me. We're talking starts that start at one o'clock in the morning. And when I first started in April of 2021, that's how long it's been going on for, I had to get up every single morning and I've been getting up every single morning since April of 2021 at one to two o'clock every morning. I just want to put the reality out there for all of you with remote leadership. <clears throat> this is not for the faint hearted. This is not for people who go, I want to get my DTM. I've had people recently say, I want to get my DTM. We've got one of the other remote leaders here in the room who is going to be serving as program quality director next year into District 21, Carlos Miones. And we've both heard this constantly. And I know we've also got um, the current public relations manager from Founders District, who is also a remote leader. She calls in from Taiwan into California every day. And we can tell you, getting up at one or two o'clock in the morning is not easy. Let me just underline that. 
it is not easy to get up at one or two o'clock every single morning and be there. Another thing with remote leadership is it's a very lonely place. A lot of people don't realize how lonely this experience actually is. So not only are you getting up at one, two o'clock in the morning, but you're also having to sit here at times when there is no one else available trying to make decisions. You've got the chessboard out there and you've got the piece on the chessboard and you're trying to position yourself, where am I going to make my next move? That's what remote leadership is. A lot of people think it's easy because you can just sit here, turn on a computer and have the screen on for an hour and a half, turn it off, and then that's it. That's not how it works, my friends. That is not how it works at all. <laughs> and we can tell you, it does not work like that. I'll even ask Carlos now. Carlos is here. Carlos, it doesn't work like that, does it? <clears throat> nope. 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 Exactly. Um, Simone is here. Hopefully she has her screen on. Simone, it doesn't work like that, does it? No, exactly. So Simone had to stay up a few weeks ago for the conference in district, Founders District, and so did, I think, Carlos. And they had to stay up all night, what we call the all-nighter, and manage the whole night. So stay awake for almost 24 hours. That's part of our lives when we become a remote leader. So I just want to share some tips with everyone and talking about remote leadership because it, it's coming a, a long way from when we first pioneered. The first two original pioneers, there was someone up in Canada. I can't remember his name. He was calling in from the USA into Canada. He was the original trio member that sort of started us off on this journey. And then, of course, there was myself and Violetta Rios. Violetta currently serves on the board of international directors now. And she was a public relations manager calling in from Mexico into Texas as well, whereas I was calling in from Australia into the USA. And we used to talk on a weekly basis on where we were and what we do. The remote leaders do talk with each other. I talk with Carlos every couple of days. I speak to Simone probably every couple of days as well. So <clears throat> some of the tips that I have for remote leadership, this is something that is a concept that is known in remote leadership, not only in Toastmasters, but also in the business world. And the concept is leadership first, location second. Let me repeat that again. Leadership first, location second. So what we're here is we're emphasizing the priority of strong and effective leadership over physical location or the geographical setting of where our boundaries are. So when we break this down, leadership first, we're prioritizing our leadership skills. So we're making sure that the effective leadership is considered the most critical factor for the success of running our district. So this includes qualities like our vision. So what's my vision for next year? Decision-making, communication, how I communicate and how we communicate as a team and the ability to be able to inspire and motivate others. Now I'm serving as a division A director this year and it has been very difficult trying to corral the human beings this year. However, I've been very successful in the way that my team has operated this year because we have been able to communicate effectively and also we've been able to focus and be able to be motivated, inspired. How do we do that? We have division council meetings, not once a month, not twice a month, but every single week. We meet for an hour and a half to two hours every Friday, Hawaiian time from 6.30 to 8.30 or 6.30 to 8. And they have been coming nonstop since April of last year. That is how committed my team is. So you make sure that you set the standards and you communicate and inspire people. The second one is impact on performance. You're influencing the performance and the morale of your team. And you're driving success regardless of where the team is located. My team is located in the most unique places. We've got Jan, who's located in Maui. We've got Rosie, who's located in Gondwindi. We've got Tanishk, who is in India. Sanjuni, who's in Sri Lanka. I'm in Australia. And then we've also got people who are located in Thailand, 
Vietnam, um, India, Malaysia, you name it. We've got people from all around the world, but we still are able to meet every single week and we're still able to communicate with each other and we drive the success no matter where we are located. And the third one in this leadership first is adaptability and resilience. <clears throat> You're able to navigate the challenges and the changes. You ensure that people maintain and remain focused within the team and we productively and even less than locations are remote setups, we can say that way. We are adaptable and we are resilient. Then we come into the location second. So what's location second? Three points. Flexibility in operations. The physical location is seen as that secondary factor. So it shouldn't hinder the effectiveness of our leadership or our performance of the team. We emphasize um, the way that we support each other. So emphasis on the support. So that's the second one and resources allocation. So we make sure that each team member, especially in Division A, has the right resources for each team member. So for an example, this, this past few months, we had um, some area director reports that we needed to divvy up or we needed to spread across the team and delegate. So my area directors, Jan is here today and she's our incoming club growth director for District 49. I asked the team who could take what? They all put their hands up. Each one took two clubs each. And within two weeks, less than two weeks, all of our area director reports were completed. We were the first division to have all of our 100% of our area director reports in by the first week of May. So I really want to congratulate them. Um, they all played a part. Even Sam Junior, who's only been Toastmasters for less than 12 months, knew how to write an area director report because they put their hands up and they said, we're going to commit to it. And we taught each one, myself, Rosie, and also Julie, who is um, an immediate past district director for Founders District. So we make sure that we're there and we're committed to resources and allocating the resources. So that's just some concepts of leadership first and location second. A lot of people have asked about that, like how how can you actually do the role if you're not there? I think sometimes it's about putting your head down and putting your tail up and actually putting the effort in. So really having that effort and take away from it. I'm going to move away from the leadership first and location second concept now. I'm going to talk about the technology that we use. So we all use, everyone here knows how to use Zoom because we're all here on Zoom, right? Yes. <clears throat> technology is a huge factor and a critical factor in success as a remote leader. I think with, with, with regards to um, remote leadership, if you don't know how to use your phone or WhatsApp or one of the concepts of the apps, you are going to struggle as a remote leader. So at the moment, I'm putting together a plan of um, of like what type of technologies that we should actually consider. But some of the ones that we do use throughout our team and we will use for next year, um, and we will have Facebook Messenger. That's That's a big one. Um, but you have to be careful with, with some of these apps that you use, these messenger apps. So we've got example, Facebook messenger can't be used in China and Russia. Kakao chat is used in South Korea. WhatsApp is used in majority of locations, except it is not available in China and Russia. However, you can also use Telegram. Um, so we could possibly use Telegram but that is an app that is not allowed in China, but allowed in Russia. So it's about what communication channels that you can actually get out there and use to the best of your ability. And WhatsApp, we have found as a team, has been the best source of communication. Time management. Now, this is something that a lot of people ask about. How do you manage your time? Hmm. Everyone sees me on Facebook going to Toastmasters meetings all around the world. 
Well, I had a big conversation with a couple of people lately and I have started to step back. It's amazing. I am starting to step back at the moment because of my role for next year, because I can't keep on doing what I'm doing. I can't go to five Toastmasters meetings a day, seven days a week. But yes, I would say time management is a crucial thing. So being able to be the best version of yourself, you actually need to focus on what time you have. But I think one of the most important thing as a remote leader, and Carlos will say the same as well as me, is the people that you surround yourself with. I'll repeat that again. The people that you surround yourself with. Now, I've been lucky to have surrounded myself with some amazing people over the last few years in Toastmasters. And one of them is actually here today. And I do have to... um do have to make um, a huge credit to this individual. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I've been a remote leader since 2021 and it is a very long journey. It is a very lonely journey. I sit up sometimes at night going, why am I doing this? Why do I keep on bashing my head against a brick wall doing this? And then I did it last year and I enjoyed it. But this year has been a lot different. At least I can get up at four o'clock in the morning, not one, two o'clock in the morning. And the individual I'm pointing out is David, David Fisher. Yes. Smile, David. It's okay. You can, you can smile. <laughs> let's give it, let's unmute ourselves. This man has to see me like every, every like two weeks. Yay. Say, Pat. Yay. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Sure it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so we catch up on a on a what we call in Australia a fortnightly basis or a bi-weekly basis. And David has done a fantastic job as the person who has mentored me this year, along with Vicky Kinsman, who has also been my um absolute pillar of support this year as well. David and I catch up, we talk. I mean, we don't just go, oh, let's have a mentoring conversation. No, it doesn't work like that. No, no, no. We will sit down, we'll have something to eat, we'll drink, and we'll just talk casually. And if I need to let off steam, it's either with David or it's online with Vicky. Vicky, unfortunately, couldn't make it today, it appears. But it is um one that is symbolic of being successful uh, as a leader. Um, And if you are not willing to have a mentor, I will say this, don't bother being a leader or don't even think of entertaining the idea of being a remote leader because you will not be successful. I'll just be honest with you because this is a long-term commitment and David's in this for the long haul as well. He's on for another year. So <laughs> he's he's in it for another year. He, he, he knows that. Kevin is also in this for another year with me as well from District 49. He is also supporting me next year. And these people are the type of people you want to surround yourself with because this is the type of success I want to be. Back in 2014, 2015, I was an area governor, which is now known as an area director for David. David led the world's largest district in 2014, 2015. He had 325 clubs. 10 divisions and almost 70 to 80 areas. Now that is un unbelievable numbers. Those phenomenal numbers that we usually don't hear of these days in Toastmasters. But David led the world's largest district. Whilst he was not distinguished and he should have been distinguished, he did a fantastic job. All 10 divisions got distinguished or better. Majority of the areas were distinguished. We just missed out with the numbers, the membership numbers. However, the districts that he had that came and broke away from the district that he was district or governor for, so director, governor, I can't remember, it was governor, wasn't it, David? Yeah, district governor. He was the last, officially the last district governor for 70. They went on to both be um, distinguished in their own rights and they have gone on and split in their own rights. So that's why I call success. Kevin was distinguished as a district governor when he served in District 49. And he's one of the very few that has actually been there. So I do celebrate these two individuals 
who have helped me, especially David. And we get to speak Australian as well. Aussies do have a have a have their own little language in their own right. But yeah, they is something that I really suggest if you are thinking of being a remote leader, surround yourself with the right people and connect yourself with the right people because you have to be here for the long term and you have to be motivated for your members, but you also have to have a sounding board to be there to celebrate both your achievements, but also when you need to let off steam. And trust me, I've let off a lot of steam, haven't I, Damon? <laughs> yes, he's admitting to the truth right there and then. All right. So some, some other things I do want to suggest for people is managing your, your time and managing your week remotely. Don't sit at home because I, I live and work from home or I'm in a, a at home situation. Don't, I don't a hundred percent do most of my stuff at home. In fact, I will visit a different site every single, every single day or a couple, every couple of days so that I've got something new um, and proactive to think about. So for example, I'll go out to Sydney Olympic Park where the Olympic Games were held in 2000. So I actually go out there to a coffee shop. And I stare at the Olympic site. I stare at the actual um, torch where the, where, the, where the light was. And then I'll stare at something else just so that I've got something else to visualize because I like to visualize certain things. I don't want to be stuck in my room, especially with the cat meowing at me all day. That's the last thing I want. I also like to go out and I like to think, I like to do things away from my from my room and away from the computer because trust me, I spend a lot of time on the computer and a lot of time on Zoom and it is a killer on the eyes and it's a killer on my back. So actually getting out there and being proactive and thinking about your health. I haven't been good with myself lately, hence why I've got a very bad cold at the moment, but I'm still holding myself together but I will go offline probably in the next day or so so that I can recover. And lastly, think about how you spend time with your family and friends. Family and friends must always take priority over the Toastmasters journey. I spend a lot of time with my dad who is not well at the moment, but he always takes priority as well. So in summary, because I can see our lovely friend Sean has turned on the yellow light, Remote leadership is an amazing experience. It has taken me to infinity and beyond. And that was one of my catchphrases that I said in my speech recently when I won the election over in Hawaii, District 49, back at the beginning of May. It's about being resilient. It's about being able to hold yourself together. It's a very lonely and dry experience, which has long hours um, which also requires a strong commitment and dedication. If you want to be a remote leader, don't do it because you want to become a DTM. In fact, most of us will say, don't come near us unless you're there to serve the members. You need to do this with a purpose and for a reason. And we've got a few of the people here who are remote leaders saying, yes, please actually do this for the benefit of yourself and for the benefit of our members in Toastmasters. I would encourage everyone to consider thinking about being a remote leader, but before doing it, make sure it is for you. Make sure it is what you really want. If it is something you really want, please have a discussion with me today. I've got a couple of the remote leaders here. You've got myself, Carlos and Simone, and we would be more than happy to have an open discussion with you. We are honest and truthful about this. I'm going to hand back to our Toastmasters today, Send Judy. Thank you very much Alicia and that session was really insightful and uh, I'm so happy that you have uh, gone through uh, really uh, with ups and downs but you have achieved the dream of your life and it's a real a success so I think the audience is having more and more questions to ask you so I would love to invite our uh, Tommy, Tommy Zirazad to conduct the session to ask you the questions on the session. Oh. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Sanduni. Well, Alicia, questions are coming in hard and fast. So let's get right into it. The first question, 
how can we ensure our council members remain committed throughout their entire term? And what specific conversation should we as leader initiate with our team to foster this commitment while addressing what's in it for them? Can I repeat that again? I'll, say, I'll repeat um, it again. Are we able to split that into two, like into three? Because that's about three or four questions within one. Okay, are we good. able to break that up into the into the different questions, if that's okay? All right, good. Okay, I'll do that. How can we ensure our council members remain committed throughout their entire term? What are the specific conversations? That's a really good question. So council members, I'm, ass I'm assuming the DEC members, the district executive council team. Okay, let's be honest. I'm going to be really honest with you. You're not going to have 100% um, strike weight of being able to keep a whole team on board. That's the reality of the situation. You're not going to keep the original um, team. That's that's reality. We've lost about three or four members of my team this year, um, and it's not because... the they've done anything wrong people had life happen life happens with people so you have to think about when when you go on this journey and I was you know heartbroken with one or two of the people that I lost but you have to realize that life happens so that's why you've got the air and the spare so the air is the next one and that's why you should always have assistance that's what we always say have an air and a spare assistant and an assistant so my suggestion is for a council for next year, and I will try and make sure that the area directors that we do appoint, um, they will have the heirs and the spares. So an assistant area director and another assistant area director. We found that that was really helpful this year. Jan Fanner was helpful with her. She had an assistant and um, so did Yarnika, one of my other area directors. Um, Sanjuni was one of the assistants and so was Tanishk. And we also had a lovely lady from Japan who was also assisting us as well. So we had the heirs and the spares. Keep other people and delegate. So making sure that you have not just one person, because trust me, as an area director, you get burnt out. As a division director, you can get burnt out as well. So have the heirs and the spares. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Next question. How did you organize the speech contest when you were a program quality director in District 100? Speech contests are not that hard, and I just want to put it out there. Our, our district mission is we build new clubs and support all clubs in achieving excellence. Contests are not a priority in Toastmasters, and I'm just going to put that out there. We need to stop focusing 100% on our contests. We need to focus on our leadership and our members and club quality and excellence. And I can see the international past international directors nodding their heads, smiling like little happy, happy little beavers because I've said that. Okay, the contest in District 49, at the moment, we run um, just the international speech contest. Now, that is currently up in the air at the moment as we speak because Toastmasters International wants it 100% online. However, there is arguments that could possibly go to the convention um, because there are a lot of scenarios where members are saying that they want to see the, the district make the decision of hybrid, online, in-person, whatever. And I will fight that for our members if that is what they want. So I'll be taking that to the convention. Um, it is not hard to organise a contest, seriously. Um, you organise, so you have a contest team. District 49 has a contest team. And we delegate to that team to organise the contest on our behalf. An area director's responsibility at the bottom of the rung is a contest um, as well as the division director. So you delegate to the team and then they can organize for you. When I was a program quality director, I had a chief judge and this is one of the most important things. All districts should have program quality directors. So Carlos, tip tip here for you, sir, get yourself a chief judge for your district and get them as well as the contest chair, um, have a district contest chair and they can organize your contest. That was a lesson I learned from last year and I had a wonderful set of chief judges who helped me with my venues um, in person and also with the online contest. So we delegated the chief judge role um, to four chief judges from within District 100. Next question, please. Thank you. Actually, there's an extension to do 
to the question, yes. but actually you answer it because your conclusion was make sure you delegate. The question was, what if something wrong happened on site? So you've got everything already in your answer. Make sure we delegate. Thank mm -hmm. you for that. Next question. Surround yourself with good people. Easy to say, but hard to do. I only have people who show up. How do you get more dedicated people? Okay, that, that is a really good question, actually. Um, how, how do we get good people? Well, you've got to actually start talking to the right people. I mean, it, it's easy for me to say, find the right people, surround yourself with the right people. But you, what are you actually doing to talk to the people? Have you asked them, what would you like to do in Toastmasters? Have you invited them with the question, what would they like to be involved with? That's how I found my tribe. I found my tribe in the most weirdest and wonderfulest of places. I found um, Rosie and I found each other at, at, a, at an event in District 100. Carlos and I found each other um, at Smedley Chapter 1. I met Kevin at Aloha Toastmasters. I met Jan at a Toastmasters meeting in India. I met Bill Lewis from Canada um, at a Canadian um, club back in 2020. I think it was April or May of 2020. And we've been very good friends then. I met Joe Dombleski in Korea at Pacific Sunset. I met Shui Sin at her club in Burma back in 2022. I'm having a look. I met Landon Johnson last year in March 2023 when I was the Toastmaster of our Freeway um, Club meeting. As you can see, I know every single person on this screen. I can tell you exactly where I met them. I met Elliot Mao as a PQD last year um, when we served as PQDs together. I only met Lin Cole the other day. I met Dr. Tuk John Lau, who is the past international president back in 2020, when his daughter Ivy invited me to a speech -a -thon at his club connections. See, I have photographic memory. I remember every single person. I look at how we meet each other and how I connect with people. That's how you surround yourself with good people. Make sure you make an effort to know everyone and know everyone by name and remember where you met them and how you met them. Thank you. Wow, thank you. As the now time is green, last question. Last question. I think I love this question. Given you have to wake up 1, 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. when you are a remote leader, what, what is your sleep schedule like? How do you stay energized? <laughs> Hmm. So two questions, what's your sleeping shadow and how do you stay energized? Okay, all right. So I probably only speak for sleep for three or four hours a night. That's the truth. I'm just being, yep, everyone's like, oh my God, how does she do it? I've been doing that for three or four years, so I'm used to it now. Um, But I sleep throughout during the day. So I might lay down after this or I'll go out for a walk. Um, and then I might have an early night tonight, but I will be doing another Toastmasters meeting later tonight in Korea. Um, but I will take my time. I'll have two hours here or two hours there. So I might have three or four hours sleep. I know it's not the best of things to do, but I've built my body up and my resilience to it. So I understand how my body works and I know that that is how I can survive as weird as and wonderful as that may sound. Okay. Uh, last one. Still got one yep. last one. What do you do if your messages does not get any response on time? Okay. That's, that's an interesting question. So in regards to that question, if my message does not get a response, is that in regards to WhatsApp? Is that in regards to me making a message to people? How How is that framed? Because that's a very unusual question. Okay, if you wanted something to be completed, yep. you give the message, you send the message and you will not get an answer. Only If you use WhatsApp, you only get blue tick. Only seen. Yep. Okay, so, so how do you I'll... do that? Okay, so our level of communication, I'll use Division A as an example. We had a way of communicating this year. It was all done on WhatsApp. Um, I always said to people, unless the house is burning down, 
And most of the time, the house is not burning down in Toastmasters. Um, nothing is an emergency in Toastmasters unless the house is truly burning down or someone is dying. Um, have 24 to 48 hours to respond to that particular message or to that particular individual because um, people have life outside of Toastmasters, my friends. <laughs> there is more important things than Toastmasters. Um, for a lot of people so Toastmasters should be not at the top of the totem pole it should be um, whether it's you know your work your family your um, spiritual beliefs or whatever then of course work underneath that then whatever else and then of course um, family um, of course and then um, everything else um, that comes after that and then Toastmasters should be at the bottom but yeah um, we always made sure that Family came first in our team and 24-7 is not going to happen. So it can wait. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. For Thank as you. the time has, has run out, I will now pass over the floor to the Toastmaster of the day. And as you all know, there will be a separate session, a session after this, if you have any more questions. Thank you for all the questions that you have texted me, PM me, WhatsApp me. I really appreciate it. And Alicia, thank you very much for thank the you. amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tarmizi, for leading us for the FAQ session. And a huge round of applause to our esteemed speaker, Alicia. Thank you so much. If possible, let us all unmute ourselves and say the magical three words. Thank you, Alicia. Mahalo, Alicia. Mahalo. Hey, mahalo. <laughs> Thank you so much, including some of us who can't speak up at the moment. Now, Sanduni is actually on a work call right now. That's why she's not able to. And I'm stepping in because of this. I would like to also take a group photo right now because right now we are having all together 35 guests and world leaders. And we're we are so honored to have all of us to explore on this hottest topic that I call remote leadership. So with this, we are going to have a group photo, family photo once again. Now I'd like to have Lai, if possible, if you can help us with the group photo, that would be awesome. And Alif as well. Over to you, Alif. Let us know when to smile for the camera. <laughs> all right, everyone. Smile for the camera. One, two, three, smile. Let me close the, there's a tab function. Uh, one is one more, one more. Okay, one. send us your love if possible. Okay, spam. Spam Alicia with your love emoticon. Okay. One, two, three, smile. Uh, can I ask the everyone to refrain from chatting while I'm taking picture? Okay, one, two, three, smile. All right. Thank you, thank you. Certainly, we want to acknowledge and appreciate our esteemed speaker, Alicia, and also our club member, Thank you so much for sharing your very, very insightful wisdom and certainly your experience on being a remote leader for the past many years. So now Alif is going to share a very special moment of appreciation. I have no idea what it is. I want to thank Alif for being our creative director this time to create the cert. So over to you, Alif, whenever you're uh, to share the cert and also spotlight Alicia. Yes. Right, let me uh, prepare the cert first. Uh, not prepare, yes. open the cert. Yes. All right, let me spotlight put Alicia and you, Patricia. Thank you. The cert. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank you, Alif. Okay. Can I have someone to take the Yeah, photo? I will take it now, Alicia. Slide. Uh, done. Okay. Done. Taken. Yeah, smile. One, two, three. One more. Yeah, let me adjust it while. Okay, one, two, three. 
Back to you, Alif. Thank you, Lai. Uh, in hindsight, I should have added more or this week to represent Alicia's international ability. Yes, we will. We can always do a revised version to Alicia later on. But thank you, Alif, for the very, very exciting poster that you prepared. And also want to recognize all our role players except Sanduni. I think Sanduni looked different. <laughs> Looks like she just had a different oh. photo. Huh? We have to fix that. <laughs> But that's okay. Oh yeah. Sanduni, I'm not sure if she's able to stay because she's on the work call. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. We'll do whatever. Can you please the photo. Yeah, <laughs> if you can. This is the beautiful thing about Toastmasters. We are all learning together, helping each and every one of us to be the next best version. That was so fast. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me spotlight. Uh, uh, Sanduni is there. Son. Yes. Did I miss someone? How about Tamizi? Is Tamizi there? Mizi? Alright. Okay, all done. There is. Eh, except me. I Alif, where are you? <laughs> Alif, where are you? <laughs> Alif, <laughs> did you spotlight yourself? Okay, we take the picture now. Okay, ready everyone? Yes. yes. Now, one, two, three. Okay, another one. Let me adjust. Okay, get ready. One, two, three. Okay, done. Back to Alif. Yeah. I think that's all for Thank me. you. Excellent. We really want to thank all of us. Now we can unspotlight each and every one of us because there is so much knowledge that's being shared. So let us let Alicia know which part of the section that you like the most. Whether she, when she mentioned about remote leadership, is it the engagement part? or the technological part, which part that hit you the most that you really want to spend more time to improve yourself so that you can be more of an um, effective remote leader. So go ahead and type in the chat. Okay, I see Patty, Patty Kennedy from Dubai. She's also our past international director. Engagement, sleeping advice, wow, yeah. That's what I really find something very important to get to know ourselves, know our biological system. And what about the rest of you? Feel free to share. What is the most part that you really want to work on? Because I feel having the concept, embracing the concept of remote leadership can bring you so far in life. This is no longer an option. I always feel when the pandemic hit, nobody was ready for it, but somehow we got to survive and that's how we kind of evolve our leadership style. Fantastic. I can see the response coming in. Please keep the response coming in. And as a matter of fact, it has been an honor to have certainly Alicia to share so much of her experience and knowledge. And I know a lot of us still have questions on this. And because of that, we're going to have another session, which is Ask Alicia Anything, which will not be recorded. <laughs> so you have some burning questions that you really want to find out from Alicia's perspective, how she deals with it. You are more than welcome to stay after 1.30 to 1.45. Having said that, it has been an honor for us to host this master class on the power of remote leadership. I want to applaud all of you for spending your time supporting this event. And I know we all have a wealth of knowledge to contribute to our tribe, our community. And at the same time, I feel so privileged to have so many of us volunteers willing to spend our invaluable time to help each other to be the next best version. So back to the question, how to find your tribe? How to find the people whom you're going to feel so free to cry to them when you need help? And of course, to have them celebrate your success when you're up there, big and small. Perhaps this is a million dollar question that we have to keep asking ourselves. What is it in you that can offer them to be part of your tribe and at the same time continue to build this positivity, build this optimism? So at the end of the day, I believe we are all here with the mission, with the calling 
to make our world a better place. I have no idea what your world is like. My world can be very small. It can be just my family members, my community, my workplace. But more so think of the possibilities. When you're able to embrace the idea, the power of remote leadership, think of how, how beautiful or how much heaven you can create in your own rights. The time now is 127 and I'm so excited and happy. I know this topic can be sometimes a little more intense, but let us really, really open up ourselves as we are all doing right now and spread the news. Spread the news of the power of remote leadership to your tribe so that you can bring more people to enjoy and to learn from so many untapped hidden talents in all of us. So right now, I'd like to certainly invite you, if you have to go, please leave a gift from your own learning experience as a remote leader. What, what is the gift that you want to offer to all of us? It can be in a form of gratitude, appreciation, or that special secret you want to share with us. How to be an engaging, effective remote leader. The time now is 128. Let us know your gift to all of us or what is the biggest takeaway from today's masterclass. And we will start our Ask Alicia Anything right on the dot when 1.30 ding, ding, ding hit. And our distinguished Toast Master Lai Gokfo, who has completed all the 11 paths, will take over the session. So go ahead and let us know what is the biggest gift or your takeaway on remote leadership skills. On this note, I would actually like to spotlight Patty Kennedy. You've been such a great leader to Alicia and certainly to many of us now. So Patty, would you like to share a few words on remote leadership? Because I believe you have been on this journey as well. Thank you, Patty. I know this is rather impromptu, but take it away. <laughs> Well, thanks a lot, Patricia. It, I was just about ready to get on with my work day, but I'll take a moment here. First of all, I must say I have not been an international director, although I have coached many international directors. So uh, David messaged me, said, well, you know, you're all, Alicia called it a, an upgrade. And David said, well, you've coached a lot. I think this is a great meeting and I'm really impressed that you have so many people showing up. So kudos for that. I think the best thing that we can do is be present. You know, it's the greatest gift we can give to each other is to be present. And so when we show up in these meetings, to be present, to be engaging, to lead by example. This is a great club. I'm really happy that I've been here. And there's one thing I want to say about our speaker today, Alicia. Years, a couple of years ago during the pandemic, and I was training somebody, I don't remember if it was second VP or an international director candidate, I don't remember, but there was a discussion. Yeah, we're gonna stop um, Zoom meetings. I'm like, no, you can't. And I said, well, why not? And I said, well, you'll lose Alicia Curtis because she's a, <laughs> she's toast mastering all around the world. And you can't, we can't afford to lose a member like that. So I'm really glad that uh, the organization and I hope that they should uh, carry on always having online and hybrid meetings. It makes a world of difference. And I want to say thank you, Alicia, for coming to our club here in Dubai. Be bold for change. Uh, we've made Alicia uh, an honorary member of our All Ladies Club here in Dubai. And I want to say thank you for your participation. For she gives, as you probably know, the best evaluations. When she's your grammarian, you're going to get a spreadsheet. I mean, it's fascinating and fabulous. So thank you all. I have to get to work. Thank you, Kevin. Maybe Thanks, I should have Patty. been the introduction director, but I'm not. Thank you, okay, Patty. You thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have love you, work. Patty. You thank too, you. my bye dear. Bye. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. Take great care. Have a great day. Great. Now. We are going to hand the session over 